We thought, why not bring on Dr. K, Dwight Gooden, to talk about the matchup and the pitching, the state of the game right now. Doc, great to see you. Last time I think we connected, we were doing an all-star event pre-pandemic, so it feels like a million years ago. How you doing? Oh, everything is great. Thanks for having me on, and I remember that. We had a great time in Cleveland at the fan festivities. It's good to be on the show, and I'm definitely looking forward to the game tonight. Yeah, me too. DeGrom matching up against one of the best teams in baseball, and also Blake Snell is pretty good too when he's got the good stuff going. But let's focus on Jacob for a moment. Have you been watching him this year? What have you observed about his progression to, I would say, legendary status, a living legend at the moment? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, watching him has been great. Um, I, I mark my calendar for every fifth day or fifth game that he's pitching, and my day – resolves around what he's doing and um, the things he's doing is just amazing and it seems like every year believe it or not he's getting better and better when you think the years he's had the previous two or three years he's had you think it's impossible to get better but now this year he's even better than the previous years and considering what he's been through where the beginning of the season you know they got pushed back because a couple of the, um, national players had you know COVID and then a couple of rainouts he had a setback with the side injury and this guy still haven't missed a step. I mean, day in and day, day night, he's just stepping in and getting the job done. Yeah, we're looking at the numbers next to you on the side of the screen. I don't know how much better you can be than DeGrom. This is the best start to a season from a pitcher ever, first nine starts. You had a nine-start run. It wasn't at the beginning of a season, but we found one August 20 to October 2, a nine-start stretch of 0.73 with the ERA. So what's it like to have such a hot hand like this? Do you just head to the mound and everything's going where you want it? It's a situation where, you know, you accept the challenge. What I mean by that, you know, everything is, is bigger than just a game at that time because the crowd's bigger. It's more media attention. And you accept the challenge of going out and competing. And when you're in a zone like that, you're just locked in with every pitch. You feel like I could put any pitch where I want to put the pitch, um, no matter what the pitch is. And you feel like you're in total control of reading bat speed and going on and on and not being complacent between starts, working on different things to get better and prepare yourself for that next start. Hey, so in 85, you win Cy Young, but we looked up your wins above replacement. Your war was 13.3, by far the best in Major League Baseball. So I think writers would have loved you even more nowadays, as that wasn't a stat used back then. Willie McGee won the award. He checked in at 8.2. You finished fourth for MVP. Point being, number one, should you have won MVP <laughs> back then? And number two, is DeGrom going to win it if he keeps this up? Oh, man, you put me on the spot because Willie did have a great year, outstanding year. But looking at the numbers that I had that year, I thought for sure I should have won, or at least finished a close second. But unfortunately, you know, it was out of my hands. And um, it still was a great year, phenomenal time. And then to get the Cy Young and the Triple Crown that year, I was, I'll take that. And the way DeGrom is pitching this year, I don't see no reason why he won't continue. Maybe not at this point with the ERA, but real close to what he's doing now. He probably would definitely be in the running for MVP. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I would say at least up there with some of the candidates on the position player side. And if there's ever an MVP on the pitching side, if you believe in that and a guy that's pitching every five days instead of a player playing every day, this would be one of the years where you got to pay serious attention. I'm curious from a pitching perspective, when you're watching him every fifth day, are you amazed by how the velocity has picked up over the course of his career? There's really not many comps when you look at Major League history and the thousands and thousands of players that have been able to pick up velocity like this. Are you amazed? How do you think he's doing this? I mean, it's so free and easy out of the hand, but still, you usually see that in the young 20s and not something like this develop in his late 20s into his 30s. Oh, you're exactly right. Um, I think what he's doing, like, obviously, it starts with his mechanics. His mechanics is very sound, very consistent, what he's doing. And like you said, he's getting stronger as he's getting older, year by year. Um, I know he had a late start to pitching because he was drafted as a shortstop. That may have a little to do with it. But I think the work that he puts in during the offseason and during the season definitely helps. And this guy, if he can avoid you know any serious injuries, I think he can maintain that. And the thing that I'm mostly impressed with, he doesn't lose any velocity during the course of the game. He actually gets stronger during the course of the game. And when Miz gets to a scoring position, I don't know the numbers offhand, but he actually gets even stronger when he got runners in the scoring position with less than two outs. That's the thing that I'm most amazed by him about. To have that many strikeouts and, and get it done, I joked earlier, I mean, 
three pitches and he's off and putting guys away. He's just not wasting any time. Okay, one on the Mets and then a little bit of state of the game. So Mets wise, this team's gone through injuries. Plenty of other teams can say the same thing. How impressed are you with the Mets right now? Three and a half games up in the division and still missing quite a few guys. I think they're doing a great job, and that's what um, it takes. Guys that, you know, stepping up and stepping in and doing a great job. Um, you have injuries. Like you say, all teams have injuries. But having the right mixture of guys that can step in and not lose a beat, it's amazing what they've been able to do. And I'm very impressed with the manager as well, Lewis Ross, with the job he's doing, mixing these guys up in the matches that he put these guys against. And Lindor is just getting going as well. So you look at the injuries, and Lindor got off to a slow start, and they're still right there. So once the pieces come back together, the guys that have been hurt and um, hopefully Senegal come back as well as Carrasco. I think this guy should take off. Just keep it close where they are. But I'm very impressed with what they're doing and maintaining consistency right now. If I told you the Mets win their first World Series title <laughs> since 86 back in the day with your squad, would you be surprised? Not at all. Not at all. Not this year. The way things are going. And when they had all these injuries, I thought, man, you know, they might fall out right here. But they maintain and stand right there. And that's what good teams do. They're not missing a beat. You know, now it's just a matter of getting consistently. And what I mean by that, getting good pitching, what they've been having, and, and consistent hitting, and they're going to be just fine. Yeah, just a run or two, game one of each series. That's pretty much all you'll need if DeGrom's going like he is right now. Okay, so, Doc, state of the game, pitching-wise, we've talked about, you know, the sticky substances on baseball right, on baseballs right now and how we can police the pitchers better and make sure it's kind of uniform for everyone. So what do you think about that storyline right now and how it can be practiced – I guess, fairly in the sport. I just think that um, the way things are going now, you know, you always hear different things when, with the, with the, say with the hitters, when they're hitting home runs, you hear about the balls, you know, being juice or, you know, different type of wood on the bats. Now that the pitchers have the upper hand, now they're talking about the sticky stuff. I just think that rumors will always be around baseball when, whether it's the pitchers dominating or the hitters dominating. But unfortunately, you know, you just got to get back to the basic stuff. And I think, um, go back to what's illegal and what's not illegal. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with pitchers using, you know, substance as long as it's legal to use. And the same as hitters using pine tar on their bats to get a better grip. That works to their advantage. So with the pitchers using different things, as long as it's legal, I think it's fine. Did, did you guys use stuff back in the day to make sure you get a good grip on the baseball? Me personally, I used to sweat a lot. So I, did, I would go to sweat, you know, to get a grip when it was cold weather, like in April or September. Um, other than that, not too much for myself, but you hear about certain guys using different things, um, whether it's pine tar, uh, certain guys like, you know, Mike Scott was accused of using sandpaper. He never got caught, but I pitched against Mike and there was some balls scuffed in the same spot every single time. But uh, <laughs> not saying I'm accusing him, but it did happen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm sure guys use certain things and different things that was illegal, but today's age, I don't really see it too much and I might be a little biased. But I'm happy that pitchers are getting back on top and dominating. I like the two to one ball games opposed to the <laughs> ten nine ball games. I figured you're kicking back. You're loving the swing and miss, so you're going to be all over this one tonight. Blake Snell <laughs> against Jacob Degrom. Doc, always a yes, pleasure. Sir. Really great combo with you, and hopefully we'll do another one of those events soon in person. Let's do it soon. All right.